So everyone, welcome to the next talk by Mark Andre Tanner about Wiz Editor. Did I pronounce it correctly? Yeah, more or less. Um, welcome to my talk. I'm Mark, and I've been developing this editor for the last couple of years. So first, some historical context. Basically, as the talk mentions, we combine model editing with structural regular expressions. And here on the left, you, well, you kind of see the, the left branch, which is model editing from VI. And then we have a right branch, which is from the Plan 9 editor, Sam and Acme. And to get a kind of feel for the audience, how many of you uh, have used VI? OK, so that's more than half. And how many of you have used one of the Plan 9 editors, for example, Sam or Acme? OK, that's quite a few less. So, and then what is this all about? So I would like to start with a quick um, demonstration to, to get you your interest. Basically, um, what we will do here is now we will try to select all comments which contain a to-do marker. For that, we use a structural regular expression to select all occurrences of to-do. Now the editor created um, these to-do mark, uh, these selections, and now we uh, use a text object to extend the selections to the current lexer token, meaning that um, the comments will then be selected. So as you see here now, this worked for both um, multi-line comments and single-line comments. And now we delete this. And then the next thing is we want to rename a function argument. So we selected the first occurrence and then we search for the next. Um, we skip one and finally we have what we want and we change the name of the argument. Then we select the whole argument and we split the selection in comma remove um, leading and trailing white spaces and then we rotate selection contents around. So by now the argument order changed. And finally we can also split selections um, by words and then align them for example to quickly format um, yeah, some code section. Yeah, that's for the demonstration. Now back to our demonstration, our thing. So the first thing is model editing, but I think we can quickly skip this as you're familiar with VI. So it's basically just the concept that the same keys can be used for different stuff depending on the context or the mode we are in. And here are a quick example. So we express something like uh, we want to delete two inner blocks and this is uh, the underlying grammar. So we have an operator which says what we want to do, a count, how many times something should happen, and then uh, an, a text object here. It. And I, say, I really think that's the correct way to learn about the model editor in general is to, is to consider the, the grammar underlying it. And for now, we still follow the same basic grammar as VI, so we have um, a word, uh, a verb object form, meaning we first say what we want and then to what it should be applied. But uh, we might change this, in fact, in the future because we could uh, as well have it the other way around with object uh, verb order, meaning we first select what we want to do and then say what we want to do. And then the, the second thing which this editor does is uh, structural regular expressions. And the name is a bit unfortunate because, um, well, it, could be, it can be a bit ambitious, but it's basically the concept introduced by Rob Pike while he was working on the Plan 9 editors. And he basically realized that um, often the model of files as an array of lines is too limiting. It is, um, in some cases, uh, much more elegant to express the range on which we want to operate based on regular expressions. And these are a few examples. So, for example, if we want to search and replace, we can first ex um, extract 
all occurrences of Emacs and then change it to VI. Note that this is all an interactive process, so if we stop these pipelining commands in the middle, for example, if we would only, start, um, only extract all occurrences of Emacs, then you would be dropped into visual mode with uh, selection for each match, which you could then further modify with um, your regular model editing commands. And then, for example, this would indent some range by first extracting the start of a line and then inserting a tab character before it. Similar, we can do then by um, extracting all lines which start with a tab character and then once we've defined this range, we can delete it. And really, this structural regular expression command language is quite powerful because it has this looping and um, conditional syntaxes. So what this here does is it selects all occurrences of Lua and then within that range it uh, selects all occurrences of lowercase l and then once we have this selection it changes it to uppercase l resulting in the correct capitalization. Then guards, what this command does for example is it changes all lowercase i words into uppercase i. It does this by extracting all words and then filtering the selection to only keep those matching lowercase i and further change it. And then, yeah, we can also um, integrate very well with external tools, so this would just select a range delimited by start and end and then pipe it through sort. And we can also group commands um, yeah, this would result in the same outcome as the very first search and replace command by first selecting all occurrence of Emacs and then before this uh, selection inserting a we and then deleting the original selection and appending an, an I. Yeah, and these slides are mostly for reference so we can we can define these ranges on which we want to apply something and then once we have such a range we can do something with it. We can append text after it, insert text before it, change it completely or delete it. And as mentioned we can interoperate with external commands. And really the looping constructs are what makes this interesting and conditionals as we've also seen. So once we have a couple of selections we can filter them to only keep those matching a certain regular expression or only those which do not match a certain regular expression. Um, so really what I would like to emphasize here is that selections are a core editing primitive of the editor. Um, so it's really about an interactive workflow. Now you might think that in, in Vim, for example, you can do um, with visual block mode or with macros, but um, I believe that this here is re really a uh, much nicer and interactive experience. And some stuff is really not possible, for example, like the selection rotation or alignment, or at least not easily possible. Um, so selections, yeah, be besides these um, structural regular expression based commands, we also have some key binding set up to, um, yeah, with more traditional like um, actions which create selections on the neighboring lines, for example. And of course, once we have selections, we can also remove them parts of this was also shown in demonstration and then again with multiple selection it allows us to do stuff like um, alignment, rotation and we can save and restore selections to marks so and then perform the regular set operations on them so this for example allows them um, backwards workflow so Normally you would start with a, with a selection and then split it up further until you have what you want. 
but sometimes you then realize that you want to restrict the action on a on a area of your document which uh, has no real common shape or form. So you would then save the current selections to a mark, um, drop the selection, mark it, um, mark new, a new region and then perform an intersection, thereby restricting the region you operate on. So then a few implementation details. So we'll use Lua as a scripting, scripting language for in-process configuration, uh, which is quite nice, I think, much better than WinScript, at least. So the API is still uh, in its infancy, but you're able to map Lua functions to, to keys, implement new operators, motions, or text objects. And really the design philosophy of the editor is to keep things simple, robust, and fast. Um, we try to restrict the functionality to strictly red, um, editing stuff. And we are, as a result, we're also really lightweight and easily deployable. For example, we have a statically linked muscle binary. Um, so that they link against the muscle libc binary which can be dropped on any Linux system and it should work out of the box. Um, yeah, how it is done, we have around a small uh, C comp code base of the editing core and then as I said Lua as a runtime configuration and scripting language. And we have um, Lots of future plans, but not enough time at the moment to implement them. So what would be really nice eventually is to lift this kind of structural regular expressions onto the semantic of the document being edited. So if we had like the AST of the underlying document in memory, then we could start like um, applying these queries to the document structure. And for example, with selections, we could extend them um, based on the AST. So if you have a selection in some expression, we could grow it like outwards until um, you had the correct, um, the correct region you want to work with. And yeah, that's basically where your help is wanted. So if you are a C hacker or a Lua developer or some other person interested in model editing, then uh, feel free to join us. There's also lots of non-coding related um, tasks available. Packaging, for example. Yeah, so to conclude, um, it's not just a VI clone. We uh, do things differently and we are also not afraid to break existing conventions if it needs to be done. And I think it's a quite powerful combination of um, model editing with this uh, SAMS structural regular expression based language coming from Plan 9 really emphasizing on this uh, multiple selection based editing. Yeah, that's basically it. So if you have questions, um, you can find us uh, on IRC, for example, on GitHub, uh, you can write an email. And on the last slides, I have a couple of links. So if you go to the FOSTEM site, download them, um, you can click on them. These are links. So they're quite, also the papers here referenced by Rob Pike are quite interesting. Anything from Plan 9 if for that matter. Um, yeah, and as a last step there, uh, the, the last couple of slides are the, the keys used for the demo. If someone wants to reproduce it, then there's also a screencast mentioned. Yeah, happy to take questions if any have. Thank you for the talk. Um, one quick question. Uh, 
Exactly, yeah, so the question was how does Swiss compare to Cocoon? And yeah, um, Cocoon has uh, gone a bit further apart from VI in that it changed, it said, as you mentioned, it changed the, the editing grammar and that's also an option for VI, for FIS, which we might consider in general. Cocoon is a bit older um, and but it's a really fine editor. I'm, um, it's also one of the influences, I would say. But we can later catch up if you want. Okay, thanks for your talk. Thank you.